Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So this is going to finish up the video here for the transmission and I just finally got the last puzzle piece in the mail today to be able to finish this transmission, this racing transmission 100% completely done with our adaption. The adapter plate came out perfect. The alignment of everything is perfect. So let me show you guys what I got in the mail today. This guy is from Tilton Racing, so big thank you to Tilton for spending a little bit of time on the phone with me to try to come up with a solution that will work for this C60 transmission. And I think we've done just that. I think we came up with the best possible solution here. So this is Tilton's, this is a hydraulic throwout bearing for the clutch, otherwise known as a concentric clutch bearing. Even though I have technically a hydraulic clutch in the buggy now, all the hydraulics are doing is they're pulling a mechanical lever which then pivots and lifts a mechanical bearing, which is what pushes pressure onto the clutch, depressing the clutch. The problem is that I don't have the right angles and enough throw out inside that clutch to be able to use a mechanical arm with a mechanical bearing. So this is the solution to that very problem. This will bolt down inside the transmission and then we've got an actual hydraulic piston itself that is putting the pressure onto the clutch fingers. Now, if you guys are doing a similar transmission swap, they don't sell these as they are to fit. Now, they do sell each individual part. They sell the piston, they sell the base, and then they also sell the bearing. So mine had to be built specifically because of the stack height of this. Normally, these are about two inches high, and I've only got about 1.8 inches to work with, and this guy measures in at 1.8 inches. So this is the correct size, it's the correct fit, and it has a wide enough head on it to be able to be used on a seven and a half inch clutch, which is what I've got in there. All right, guys, so we need to install the new concentric clutch bearing. This is gonna be our new hydraulic bearing. And of course, the function of this hydraulic piston or concentric bearing is to depress the clutch. The way that I'm going to do this, because there's no bolts, this does have to bolt down inside the transmission. You can see there's two bolt holes here. Now in the factory C60 transmissions, this is the little pivot ball that threads in here. So if we take that out and then just take, I don't know how thick this is. It's like, I don't know, 3 16ths or something. Um, washer, if we put that washer there, this becomes a flat surface. So, Here's what I'm going to do. This is eighth inch steel, and I am going to just create a little base plate myself. So we'll cut this thing down, and then what will hold that base plate down is going to be the one bolt here, which we will thread down upon there, and then it will extend over this shaft, and then this is what we will actually bolt the bearing right to, is to this piece of metal. So it'll kind of go in like that. Okay guys, it's the next day. I got our new base plate installed. I had to cut this so we can bolt our concentric clutch bearing to the base plate and that way when it retracts, this can no longer lift up. Or at least the bearing, once it's bolted in, won't. Now what I did here, I just wrapped this with some tape just so I could get a perfect center on this thing. So we drop our bearing down. That is centered. Right there. I think that is the position I'm gonna use. You can see we've got just enough material over here in this corner to get a bolt in there. And then I don't want our hydraulic lines to run into this guy. So we've got a hydraulic line there, hydraulic line there. Those two lines will both run out here so we can do like a remote bleed. And uh, that should be it. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this thing and we'll get it mounted.
the next day. All right, I think I got the position of this thing done properly. I've been messing around with the angles, the axles, just to make sure that the engine and new transmission is all going to fit in here well. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, of course, have to redo these mounts because there's never been good mounts on this side of the transmission. Eventually. Okay, guys, here's what I came up with. Made this bracket. This is a quarter inch steel. Made this bracket to fit those bolts. That, that's got three bolts in it. And then I've got this supporting piece here. Like that, that will go in. And then I would just hard mount it, just like that. So I'm less concerned about vibration. I'm a little bit concerned about vibration because it is a three cylinder engine. So it's gonna have, of course, quite a bit of vibration through the frame. I don't think it's gonna be terrible and that's not why I'm avoiding this. I'm more so just worried about it ripping these tranny bolts out of the side of the transmission case because of the torque of the engine rotating this way. But I just don't have really too many other options and I'm running out of time, so we're gonna try the hard mount thing and keep our fingers crossed that maybe this does work. So I'm gonna weld this bracket up and then we'll get it reinstalled. And the reason I pulled it back out is because the new hydraulic uh, clutch bearing, AKA concentric clutch bearing, didn't seem to be releasing the clutch as cleanly as I wanted it to. Oh, by the way, I did also get my sleeve in for the axles. Look at the size of this thing. It's one and a half inch diameter, and it is a quarter inch wall thickness DOM steel. This is the part that scares me, but it's necessary for progress. So we're gonna chop this thing in half. Eventually. Good news, guys. The machine shop came through. I'm so excited about this. Okay, now. What I'm using for these axles is this big, it's a 250 wall DOM, okay, carbon, it's a high strength steel, and this is what we got. Now, they were instructed to do this a particular way and they couldn't really do it that way, I think mainly for time's sake. My instruction, um, I cut the angles on these to 30 degrees because it occurred to me that if they're cut on a 30 degree angle and they try to twist, the axles will actually separate this way. So instead of 100% of the torque being put right on these welds, there's actually outward force that would be applied to the welds and or it would just simply bow out the sleeve. And I think the sleeve is just too thick and too strong for it really to bow out. So hopefully they hold, but that's about as good a job as I can ask for in like one day notice. Now the only thing that they were not able to do is they did not weld the two axles together. They just slipped the sleeve over and this is what we're left with. It concerns me a little bit less because I cut those on an angle and again, they can't expand or if they do, the stress will push outward on these welds. I was chatting with Ratherby Welding. He suggested maybe I do a couple of plug welds on these. So I'm gonna do a couple of test holes. I'm gonna drill just a, maybe two holes to start back here somewhere and um, see if I can get my TIG torch in there and get a good, good clean plug weld. I'll probably stagger just a couple of holes, like do a plug weld there and there, and then maybe like a plug weld there and there, just to kind of add a little bit more security. Last thing I wanna do is take all the time to put these together and just have it break right here at these welds. Plug 
welds done. They welded up pretty well. That's one. We got the second one done. We'll let these cool off. We'll clean them. We'll get them painted and reassembled. One week later. The Durhamtown trip is done and over. Now unfortunately the buggy didn't make it on this particular trip. The axles are done. I did four large plug welds per axle to make sure that they're as strong as possible. Um, got all of that finished and I took quite a bit of time to do that and I still had enough time to finish the buggy and bring it to Durhamtown if it was working. It wasn't. Let me explain what wasn't working. If you guys remember, the last time the buggy did not make it to Durham Town was actually for the same issue. Well, same type of issue. Both times it hasn't made it was clutch related. The clutch is not releasing. Now, I blame the hydraulic throwout bearing. I thought maybe I wasn't getting the lines to bleed because the port was not perfectly at the top or maybe I just didn't set something up properly with the hydraulic throwout bearing. None of that was the issue. I thought that if it released cleanly on the press that it had to release cleanly in the buggy. And that wasn't the case. It did not release cleanly in the buggy. But I have a very, very strong suspicion now that I've given it some thought as I was at Durham Town as to what the problem actually is. Now that pressure plate sits right over the top. In fact, this portion of the spring tucks into inside of that bell housing where the spring is, and there's very little room. Now on this clutch, on this stock clutch, I have about half an inch on this new clutch disc because it is a larger assembly entirely, and it's got six springs in it. It is larger and it's wider, and it only fits inside the clutch bell housing by a few thousands. If the clutch shafts were not aligned perfectly, there's a possibility that the outside of this will catch on the inside of that bell housing. Even if it's not enough friction to stop the clutch disc from moving, which it wouldn't be enough friction. If it were in gear, it would just break loose. But what I believe is happening is it's applying the full pressure, 2,000 pounds of pressure, 20,000 pounds, or whatever it is, the full pressure of that plate is clamping this thing down. It's then contacting just mildly somewhere inside that bell housing. So when we go to release the clutch, it's not actually releasing the clutch disc. I think it's jammed in that housing now because there's mild contact on the outside of that. So it's the only thing that makes sense at this point because there's really no other reason. The clutch can move around freely when the clutch pedal is depressed. So I don't blame the hydraulic throw bearing. I believe that it's snagged and hung up just on the outside of that bell housing. So there is a fix for that at least. If that's truly what's happening, then I can go in there and I can trim just a little bit off the inside of that pressure plate and or maybe on that spring assembly as well. Trim that down just a hair so it's got a little bit more free movement in there and there's no binding. So let me get this engine out of this thing. Um, Let's get this clutch pulled out and let's figure out why this clutch will not disengage. Got the transmission separated and of course this is still a mystery. I told you guys what I believe the problem is here with the clutch, um, but I'm seeing some evidence the further we dig in. The first bit of evidence was how much crud, oh you can't really see, look at all that. That is metal, a lot of metal dust coming from the bell housing of this clutch. Look at this all over. It's better without the light, but you can see. Look at that. Look at that. That is metal dust. Okay, so our clutch disc is out. And I'm trying not to touch this with greasy hands. Oh, you can almost see. It does appear on the edges here that there's some wear. And yes, 
I do see some deep scratches in our pressure plate there. So I do believe that that is the issue. Oh yeah, you can see that. See those deep gouges? Yeah, I believe that's exactly what was preventing this from releasing. And the thing is, is it doesn't take a lot of contact. It could have just lightly been, lightly been touching the edge here. And what that would do is, again, that would just prevent that disc from sliding on the shaft. So even if there was mild contact here on the edge, then when I go to release that clutch, that clutch disc is not actually releasing. The pressure plate will lift, but then the clutch would stay engaged on the surface of the flywheel. Now this should be a relatively easy fix. It's just getting a tool in the inside here and just taking off maybe eighth of an inch and then slapping her back together. Okay, so I need a block out for fifth and sixth gears because we're not using them in this transmission. If we try to put it in fifth or sixth gears, well, the transmission will get stuck and I will have to manually get out and release it. So I need to make a block off and I found this little piece of aluminum. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut it here and then uh, I'm going to drill some holes and put that on the side of the shifter as a block out. So the buggy did not make Durham Town because the clutch was binding. I showed you what I did to fix the clutch. Now I'm going to show you that the clutch is actually fixed. Let's do this. Clutch is locked. Let's test it. Oh, oh man. What do you not hear? You don't hear the faintest contact of those clutch pads. Now I'm going to release it as I'm turning. And we're engaged. So this is by far the best this clutch has ever been. Like ever. Like totally ever. So the beautiful thing with this new clutch, this hydraulic throw out bearing, is the control is insane. I don't have any slop with any arms trying to pivot and lift things and all of that garbage. The clutch is super soft, super simple, super easy to press, and the amount of throw that I need on that pedal is probably an inch to two inches. Now, if you guys have really been paying attention to this project previously, I needed so much throw in that clutch that when people would drive it, they would complain that the clutch was so far back, they'd have to lift their foot way off and then move it onto the clutch and it was snagging and ah, it was a mess. Now, the, the disengagement is so freaking good on this clutch. I'm so excited. Let's get this thing put back together so we can test drive it. Yeah, baby.